welcome to the stage, or whatever we want to call this area right here, uh, Trey Baker, who is a, what, associate research scientist? scientist yes. Right, associate research scientist at the Texas A&M Transportation Institute. He does a lot of great work, as TTI does. I'm a little jealous that other states don't have a TTI, but that's my issue. And he's going to be talking about sort of the work he's done in terms of reaching out to residents of Texas, traveling around the state, and seeing what they actually think about funding and financing, actually asking folks, instead of what we usually do is just saying, you should do this. So, go for right. it. If you stand here, you can control it and be in the view screen of the camera. Oh, okay. So oh, I, I, I moved him to the other side. You know I mean? okay. But I'd rather have him be there so he can control it. Oh, I don't mind stepping up. Yeah, okay. 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 All right. I, I'd rather not sit. I, well, you can I step pace step. anyway. <laughs> um, so it's uh, it's great to be here. Baruch, thank you very much for, for having me here. I love these conferences where I only have to drive 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> get here, I actually came down the 290 uh, tollway that uh, Mike was talking about, and I absolutely love it. Uh, so I am here today to talk to you about what Texans think about transportation funding and finance options. I have two initiatives that I'm going to be talking to you about. Let me give you a little bit of history first. This work was for, uh, funded through uh, the Policy Research Center, of which Ginger Gooden uh, is our director. We do work directly for the Texas legislature. Uh, the 82nd legislature directed TTI uh, to basically coordinate a bunch of studies that looked at the 50 most congested roadway segments here uh, in Texas. Now, in order to make sure that we had a sort of robust and very involved public involvement <coughs> process, we developed a bunch of public outreach materials in order to present to the public at all of these studies that were going on. So. At, sort of after the fact, we actually thought, well, what, how effective are these materials that we've developed? So what we did in 2014 was that myself and another researcher, we went and did 11 focus groups all throughout the state of Texas in order to test these. I'm going to mostly be talking about that effort, um, just simply because I was involved in it. Plus, I also think focus groups are very effective at actually sort of getting down as to the why of why people think a certain way. A survey will tell you a certain number of people think this. A focus group gets to the question of why do they think that. But I'm also going to talk about a, uh, a statewide poll that we did in the spring of 2014. I'm not going to talk about that too much, but I will cover it simply because it gives some context for the focus groups. So here's where we did the focus groups. As you see, we did two at uh, uh, the international border, we hit the Texas Triangle, Houston, San Antonio, Dallas, we obviously did Houston, I mean did Austin, um, we did uh, Bo We did some mid-sized cities, Beaumont, Amarillo, um, and we also did focus groups in two energy producing regions. Right here we did one in Yoakum, which sits right on the Eagleford Shale, and we also went out to my hands, which is in the Permian Basin. So we tried to get a very wide um, array of input. Uh, what we tested was we had a, uh, we went to these focus groups and we had a PowerPoint presentation. Some of the material from that PowerPoint I'm going to go over with you today. Um, we also had a video that folks watched and then we had a handout. Basically what we were doing is we were trying to get input from people on what here is interesting to you? What did you learn? What makes the case, you know, that, that maybe uh, we need to look at how we're doing things differently? What has the most impact? Um, let's see, uh, and then the poll, uh, we did this just last spring at 5,000 Texans, um, it covered a wide range of topics, right, um, and what we're going to be doing, we're going to try and do this every two years, and it's going to be longitudinal, I meaning we're going to try and get the exact same people to take the poll again in two years, uh, so I will be covering some of that. Um, so let's start real quick, just with high level, right, transportation is important, when we talk to people, in the focus groups, people, they recognize that transportation is very important and it's a very good investment. When we talk to people about why transportation is an investment, well, it gets people to their jobs. It connects communities. It gets um, goods to us. You know, we, get, we, we need it to get, to get our groceries and things like that. The question is, the next question is, is it a good value? That's a lot different, quite, that's a very difficult question for people to answer. And what we've seen is that it's difficult because people don't know what they're paying, they don't know what revenue goes in to build highways, they don't know where it's coming from, and they don't know how much they personally are paying. It's very hard for the public to say, well, I'm getting value for my transportation dollar, but they don't know how many of those transportation dollars are going into the system and they don't know where it's coming from. So let's get into some of the specific poll results here. 
Approximately 1% of our poll respondents knew the correct amount of the fuel tax and knew how much it was assessed. It's very small. Now, a lot of folks did know that the fuel tax is an excise tax and not a sales tax, but the thing is, on the poll, they only had two options. Well, they had three options. Excise tax, sales tax, I don't know. What we saw in our focus groups was that very few people, um, when you just said, what is the fuel tax, they really didn't know. Most people think it's a sales tax. Now, when we talk about, on the earlier slide, I said transportation is important. And what we found in the poll was that two-thirds of our respondents believe that more money is needed for transportation. But the thing is, there was no support for any one particular funding solution. Ginger, in the previous session, mentioned that we had uh, the dedicating sales tax to transportation, right? That was the only thing that had any support, right? We asked them on a scale of 1 to 10, what do you like? The only thing that got that average over 5 was dedicating state sales tax to transportation. Now, obviously, we just had that, uh, we just had Prop 7 pass, so this is not surprising. There was very little support for more toll roads. Now, Mike uh, earlier said, well, folks in Austin seem to like them, and the thing is, he's absolutely correct. You can find lots of studies out there that will say once people are exposed to toll roads, they tend to like them. I love the one that I ride on all the time. But the thing is, you have to keep in mind, this was statewide, right? So that we were getting a lot of folks from around the state that might not have exposure to toll roads. But so there was very little support uh, for doing more toll roads and very little support for fuel tax increases. What we found was that when you talk to people about how do we address these congestion issues, the thing that has the most support were non-monetary solutions, right? Things like doing better signal timing, better incident management. Basically, anything that doesn't take more money out of people's pockets, which is not very surprising, right? Why, why does somebody think that better signal timing is non-monetary? I go to operations meetings in Seattle, and they're all complaining about, well, nobody will fund the work to do the signal timing. I, you mean, why do people well, think why, that that's... Yeah, yeah, why do they think that's... Why do they think incident management is free? Well, it's, it's, well, but it's not extra money. They're not having to pay more. They're not, it's, not a, it's not a tax increase. It's not a fee increase. It's basically seen as making do with existing funds. It's making do with, with what we're already doing, just doing a better job of it. I just, I just comment, it takes appropriations in Washington State to do those things. Well, That's awesome. well absolutely. Still, even then, it's tremendously cheaper than I agree with that. pure infrastructure I agree with that. development. So those are right. good things to do. Okay, excuse me. That's, that's no problem. Uh, a few other quick results now. So uh, what we saw in the poll is that people want state and local officials to take more significant role in addressing transportation issues. Basically what this means is they'd rather have the state and local guys handle it than the feds. They don't want the feds coming in trying to solve our problems. Now we also found that we, we had a series of questions that asked what do you think about the way your state and local transportation uh, agencies are performing. Right? Now I want to start with the things that, that, that our, our respondents said they're doing well. Uh, Texans are generally supportive of TxDOT and their local agencies working with private entities and they think they're doing a pretty good job of that. Texans think we have a generally safe system. What's interesting is that when we would go to Amarillo or El Paso, they'd say, God, the roads in New Mexico are awful. In Beaumont and Houston, everybody said the roads in Louisiana are crap. Um, but everybody loves the roads here in Texas. Uh, making do with things generally perceived uh, is doing well with the money they have and then connecting communities. <clears throat> the things that need improvement, maintaining financial transparency, understanding expectations, working efficiently to complete projects, and then just general customer service, those are things that need some improvement. Now that's from the poll. I want to talk a little bit more detail about what we heard in the focus groups, right? Lots of perceptions of waste, right? It's government in general, right? Well, DOT is a government agency. Obviously, they're not going to spend money well. Right, there was a very sort of a general thing coming out. So there's just general sort of problems with government spending. There were stereotypes of road construction. Right, we had lots of people talk about. Well, you know, I see five guys standing around while one guy digs a hole. Obviously, they're wasting money. Right, I have this image right here because this right here, the armadillo in the road with the stripe painted, that was actually referenced specifically in several groups. They said, well, that just that, that shows you right there that they're wasting their money. You see stuff like that all the time, <laughs> right? Um, so, like I said, is that's, that real? Do what? Is that real? I have no idea, but folks think it's real. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know, and I do, I do know like the cover, Jim Hightower has a book that had, a, a, so that may be the cover of his book. Um, but anyway, but, but folks have seen that image and they think, well, that's indicative of all 
uh, transportation spending. Engineering complexity. Projects are just very complex. People don't understand all the minutiae associated with relocating utilities. Oh, I have to get all these permits, but it just looks very complex. And then project selection. Boy, you talk to people in Houston, they don't understand what's going on over there. Why are they fixing this road and they're not fixing this road? It just seems that it's all a mess. So what happens is you get this picture here, it's very complex. And people don't know what they're paying, they don't know it. So, you know, it's, so what happens is when you try to talk to people about a potential crisis, right, which Ginger was getting into a little bit, people don't want to hear that, all right? First thing we need to do is fix the, fix the spending. Let's get the contracting under, under um, you know, under control. Let's, uh, let's do better, you know, let's, um, let's cut down on the waste. And the thing is, I agree, right? Efficient, transparent, accountable use of taxpayer dollars, that should always be a priority, right? It doesn't matter if it's transportation, health and human services or what. That should always be the goal, right? But the thing is, we do have fundamental issues with how we pay for transportation. Ginger hit on these a little bit. Fuel taxes lose purchasing power over time. It's an excise tax. At 20 cents per gallon, that's the same 20 cents that we had in the 1990s that we're getting today. Vehicles are going to get more and more fuel efficient. That means a vehicle can drive a whole lot further and consume a lot less fuel, right? And the thing is, roadways have a functional lifespan. You don't just pay to build a highway and then you just maintain it for the rest of its life. They actually have to be rebuilt. Let's keep in mind that a large chunk of our highway system was built in the 1950s, its functional lifespan is pretty much over. We need to be rebuilding lots of things. So the thing is, we've got an issue here that we need to discuss. We've got a public that sees lots of waste, that doesn't understand how the current system is, uh, is funded and financed. So how do we get the public talking about this, right? How do, we get them, how do we get them to talk about how we pay for transportation? And what we found in the focus groups is that there's three key pieces of information that got people at least thinking. We're not saying it moved them towards any particular solution. We're not saying it, it you know, made them support DOT initiatives. All it did was get them going, huh, I think we do have a problem here. I'm gonna go over these in a little bit more detail here in a few minutes. One, fuel taxes are assessed on a per gallon basis. Two, Texas has increasingly relied on debt to pay for roads. Ginger said I'd be covering this. And three, Travelers are not paying as much as they might think for their infrastructure. So let's talk about this first one real quick. This is the slide that we showed in the PowerPoint, right? What it shows is the cost of gas in 1991, there's the gas tax portion, and then the cost of gas in 2014, there's the gas tax portion. This right here is what we found in the focus group. This was the most effective thing in, in, in getting people to say, oh, you know what? Maybe the current system doesn't make sense, right? We had a lot of people that would say, you know, this is just like trying to buy groceries in 2014 with your 1991 grocery budget. It's just not going to work, right? So this right here really got people thinking about the way the system is. Two, this is the second slide that we showed. $17 billion in debt from bond financing to build highways as a result of various factors, one of which could be our, us not raising the fuel tax. When we would show this, we would get audible gasps from people, right? The thing is, this angered people. The first slide, that makes the case that we've got a problem. This makes the case, this makes people angry about that problem. Particularly here in Texas. The Texas miracle, right? We're all doing so well. The economy's doing so great. And now you're telling me we're $17 billion in debt. And the thing is, if you factor in debt at the local level for transportation, that's about $23 billion. That is completely unacceptable to folks here in Texas, right? So this gets them mad. And here's another thing we showed them, right? The average Texan pays about $22 a month. Now that's state and federal gas tax and auto fees. That doesn't include your, um, you know, your motor vehicle sales taxes, right? Um, but the thing is, we would ask them, how much do you think you're paying? It's not transportation expenses. It's not gas. It's not maintenance for your car. But how much do you think you are putting into the transportation infrastructure system and we got hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, way too much. When we showed this number, people thought, oh, you know what, that's, that's really not a whole lot. Uh, maybe we are getting a really good value. Things could be better, right? Especially when you look at, on average, 128 for, uh, you know, internet, phone, cable, TV, 140 for cell phones, and you're only paying $22 for the roads that we get, right? So again, this gets people thinking, well, 
Maybe we should be looking at how we do things. Maybe we're looking at that. So we did talk about funding solutions, right? This is a sort of this is another little slide that we showed, right? And we wanted to get, so we, we we presented all this information to these folks. And then we say, okay, so we've given you all this information. What do you think we should be doing in the long term? You know, there's the old-fashioned way. We just increase the state gas tax, increase the auto fees, right? Locally based options. Is that something that might be good? A lot of people like that. Local control, local prioritization. Borrowing more. Nope, no support for that. Absolutely none. That is irresponsible. New user based resources. Maybe you've heard about fees based on miles driven. You know, didn't get a whole lot of support, but the thing is, after getting all that information, people would say, I understand why that's an attractive option. I don't like it. I don't want, any, I don't want anybody tracking my mileage, but I understand why you might want to do that. Right? And then we tried to see if we could get maybe some other solutions out of them. Didn't really get a whole lot. Why? Because the simplest thing to do is just raise the gas tax. This doesn't mean that folks would support a gas tax. It doesn't mean they want a gas tax increase. But that's the simplest thing to do. And in fact, we had people in these focus groups getting kind of frustrated with us, going, why are we talking about this? You, you, you haven't raised it in 25 years, and you're trying to get us to, to give you input on all this other stuff. Well, why has not this been done? Why has this not been done? And in fact, I did a focus group on another project many years ago in Tyler. I had a woman get mad at me. Like she thought I was lying to her that the gas tax had not been raised. People don't understand. Everything has gone up. Why not the gas tax? So again, yeah, that's the, the gasoline's gone up. What's that? The price of gasoline's got on. It's in there, right? Exactly. Well, see, that's another thing people don't understand is that the gas, the price, they see these high gas prices, they think that translates into more money for highways, right? But it's an excise tax that really doesn't. So uh, I'm going to close here by saying we do have some long-term transportation funding issues that need to be discussed, right? I don't want to stand up here. TPI is not going to advocate for any one solution, right? But we do think we need to be talking about how we pay for things, right? The public lacks a lot of the basic knowledge that will enable a fruitful discussion. Again, I want to say we should always, as government, I mean, I work for a university, we do work with the DOT, it should always be our, a goal to be transparent and accountable with our taxpayer money. But we have to talk about solutions beyond simply cutting waste, right? We do need to talk about these fundamental basic problems we have with our transportation funding and financing system. And by focusing on those three basic messages, the fuel tax is an excise tax that loses purchasing power due to inflation. As a result of us not doing anything about the situation, we've had to rely more and more on debt. And three, you're probably not paying as much as you might think. By relying on those three messages, we think you can at least get a conversation started with the public about real solutions. So uh, again, uh, this was funded by the Policy Research Center. If you are interested in any of the materials that I've talked about, the statewide transportation poll, our focus group research, we've done research on AV, on the automated connected vehicle policy. Uh, there's our website. And in fact, if you don't want to write that down, if you just Google TTI policy, that's what comes up. I've checked it. So thank you very much.